Hello everyone. So today I want to show you how to get started with a Dota 2 style character and how to texture it using my stylized material that I have been using for a good while now with my uh, models for stylized stuff. But uh, I want to show you how to get your Dota 2 character or weapon or whatever it is you're making set up. So here I brought one of the Dota 2 characters. Uh, I downloaded this straight from the Dota 2 workshop website. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in that. But basically what I did is I brought the uh, normal map from their um, from the download because they only provide the normal map. So I brought the normal map and I used it to bake the uh, world space, ambient occlusion, curvature, position and thickness maps. And to do that, I go to Bake Mesh Maps, and then I set all these up except for Normal Map. When you bake um, your maps this way, without selecting the Normal Map, uh, Substance Painter uses your Normal Map uh, as a reference to use uh, to bake all these maps. So you don't necessarily need a high poly. So if I bake that, um, it's going to bake all these maps. And actually, let me show you my settings for Curvature, because I think that's probably one of the most important ones. Usually I like to set the details to pretty low uh, settings so that my uh, the curvature doesn't come up with lines that look too thick. So if we look at the maps now, I'm gonna cycle to my wall space and press in the B key. This is the ambient occlusion. Notice that the ambient occlusion is not super clean. Uh, what I would do is, uh, under the ambient occlusion settings, increase the secondary rays to maybe halfway here. Also the max occluder. Uh, and then switch from color sign to uniform. And bake it. I'm not going to do that right now because usually when you do that, uh, the uh, baking time increases exponentially. So it takes a long, a long time to bake. So in this case it's not super clean, but uh, if you set yours with those settings, you should probably get a cleaner uh, ambient occlusion. And also because I'm using the normal map for that, it's probably not the best. It's not using a high poly to get that. So here's my curvature map. So as you can see, the lines are not super thick. Uh, they're mostly thicker on the ends. Then this is my position map and my thickness. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start by dropping in my stylized material, which is my 3DX stylized material that I made a while back. There's a link in the description if you want to learn how to make it, and there's also a link in the description if you just want to download it and start using it. So I'm going to drop that in here at the top. And I'm going to switch to, uh, I'm going to press C so I can only see my base color right here. So Dota 2 characters that are usually, uh, they have a hand painted style. So it's, uh, you know, lots of details are just painted in by hand. So what I will use my material for is to get you started in getting some good results for that. So here under my material, I'm going to scroll down under my base color, I'm going to set this to a lighter gray color. Or so, okay. the edge I'm going to probably change to a gray, a bit more of a darker color, and then for cavity. One thing I'm going to do with the cavity is uh, I'm going to add a blur just to blur it a little bit because right now as you can see we yeah, are kind of like hard um, details which I don't think look that great. I would like to soften those so to do that I'm going to click on the uh, um, mask and then the mask editor and then I'm going to right click and then add a filter select the filter and just click on the blur one and here as you can see I can start to completely blur it or you know keep some of the details there blur it a little bit more like this maybe another thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to blur the edges mask so as you can see this is what my edges mask is giving me it's giving me details uh, which are coming from the uh, 
curvature map that I baked here. And what I want to do for that is I also want to soften some of the details there because you know we get this uh, harsh line here. And I'm going to do this, the exact same thing. I'm going to click here, uh, go to Add Filter, and just blur that. And here I can decide how much I'm going to blur it. So I think softening it makes it a lot nicer. I'm also going to change the uh, color for my cavity so that it's not so dark. Maybe it's a little lighter, lighter color. And then I also need to change my ambient occlusion. As you can see, I have an ambient occlusion uh, layer, which is using my ambient occlusion that I baked. And I have it set to a color that's kind of like a reddish color, but I want to one more neutral here. I'm also going to make it just a little bit lighter. Okay. Let's see what else. Okay, so I also want to change the uh, reddish colors. And so that's coming from a layer that's using the bake lighting feature in Substance Painter. And essentially, all I want to do here is just change the color. To a more neutral. I'm actually going to change the edges color to a brighter. And this helps with the uh, with softening some of the details. Okay. So essentially, with my material, what you get is a uh, it's a good head start to get you, you know, almost halfway there. I would say it's more than halfway there. Uh, with the details that you need um so here's a let me show you here's one that i was doing earlier i'm not sure exactly let's see what i did what did i do differently i think i changed the um uh, oh, it's probably the uh how much blur blurriness I did on this oh, I said this the uh, base to almost whites um, but yeah what I did was that and then under my edges I added a blur which fixes the uh, hard lines that we get from the curvature map just to get that softened. And then I change my cavity to this kind of color here just to give it more uh, color to the fur and stuff. And then I also added a blur to it. This one doesn't do much. And then change the color variation here which it previously was like a bright color and I just set that kind of like dark a little more darker and then finally I changed the ambient occlusion color to a more neutral previously it was like a reddish color like this as I was showing you and this is what it looks like and because we're using a normal map, when we get those details on a normal map, we get some some pretty nice uh, details here from the fur. And then one more thing I'd like to do is for the whole thing, just blur it a little bit. 
uh, which is this thing. Let me do it from scratch. Uh, under filters, just drop a blur on top. And then just put it just a tiny bit, probably that. If you get closer, you can see there's a little bit of no noise here, but with that blur, just kind of blurs it a little bit. Just, for, just so that you get a cleaner result. Um, but yeah, I think this is given already pretty nice results as far as the hand, hand painted look. Um, but obviously because Dota 2 characters are really hand painted looking, you're, you're still gonna have to go in here and paint stuff by hand. So for example, I will have to make a new layer on top. Probably set this to screen maybe. Let's try overlay, uh, add a black mask and change the color here. Then start painting on this. And then, now Substance Paint has a flow setting here for band pressure and whatnot. So you would still have to come in on top of this and start painting your details a little bit more. Then you can always change the colors. That's the nice thing about Substance Painters, you can change the colors and use masks for painting. Um, let's see, let's try one more. Just duplicate it. And so let's do a blue. Let's start painting on your model. Just like you would uh, if you were using another program, say like 3D Coat to uh, paint your hand painting but yeah what I would say is this gets you halfway there and then you will have to come in and paint the rest of the details by hand um, so let's Show the other ones that I was doing. So that's the metal plate here. There is this piece that I was looking at. This one came in really nice because of the, uh, the normal map and the details that are baked in. Obviously, the nicer your high poly is, the more details it gives you when you bake your normal map. Um, which is super useful. Let's see the hat. Oh, that's not it. It's... Well, that's the original. If you want to see what the original piece is, this is the original from Dota 2 that was hand painted, I assume. Um, but with my material, what you would do is just drop it in and start getting some of those details. And I would blur the uh, edges, of course. Add a blur. I'll probably blur the cavity as well. You know, it starts giving you those details. This one gets pretty close to this. You would just kind of have to like. Uh, Make sure you paint the correct colors. So this is the original, this is with my material. Uh, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show is how to use my material to potentially uh, start your Dota 2 characters or weapons or whatever it is you're using. Uh, and get you halfway there. I'm not, I'm not uh, selling this as the drag and drop and you're done, you will probably have to do your own hand painting, the extra hand painting after you uh, initially use this material to get you halfway there. Or maybe even, I think this is probably more than halfway there. And if you want to look at the, 
color map this is what it looks like in the uh, UV view here so yeah that's what I wanted to show today just hopefully this is useful for Dota 2 fans people who create Dota 2 assets um, let me know if you use my material and how useful it is for this I think it looks looks pretty good just by tweaking a few settings like I just did uh, it gets you uh, pretty close to to some good results so yeah thank you for watching if you're interested in the material or how to make it uh, there's a link in the description